Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5, Manipulating Algebraic Expressions. Now it's an assumption here that you have some familiarity with um, expanding out uh, brackets from uh, when you were younger, doing GCC or some other qualification. However, um, I wouldn't take this stuff for granted and we'll be looking at some harder examples as well as the more basic types of examples. So let's just dive straight in. I mean, mainly looking at expanding brackets and collecting like terms. So we want to expand and simplify the following expressions. So we first got 3 minus 2x squared. And the easiest way is to just write out the bracket twice. So we've got 3 minus 2x times 3 minus 2x. And you remember that we times each term in the first bracket by each term in the second bracket. And I like to do a specific order. So I do the first thing in the first bracket times each of the things in the second bracket, followed by the second thing in the first bracket times by each of the things in the second bracket. So let's first do the 3 times each of these. So we've got the 3 times 3, which is 9. We've got 3 times minus 2x, which is minus 6x. And then we do the minus 2x times each of these. So we do the minus 2x times the 3, which is minus 6x again. And then we've also got the minus 2x times the minus 2x. And notice that negative times negative is positive. So that's one common error that students often make. And also notice that 2 times 2 is 4. So it's 4x squared and not 2x squared. And then we can collect like terms. And remember, we can collect like terms if the powers are the same and the variables used are the same. So. This is the next term, this is the next term, so we can collect those together. But that's the next squared term, so we can't collect that with these two here. And that's known as a constant term. So we've got 9, we've got minus 6x, subtract 6x, minus 6, subtract 6 is minus 12x. And then we've got the plus 4x squared. And by the way, a quick way of expanding out like two terms added or subtracted squared, if I illustrate, if I had, say, 4 plus 5x squared, the quick way of doing it is if you square the first thing, which is 16, then you times the two things together and double it. So 4 times 5x is 20x, double it is 40x, and then you square the second thing. So 5x squared is 25x squared. What about b? So this is a bit harder. We've got x plus 3 squared x plus 2. Now let's first concentrate on expanding out two of the brackets, because we've effectively got three brackets here, x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 2. In fact, I'm going to write it out like that. Now one way you could expand this out is you could do each thing in the first bracket times each thing in the second bracket times each thing in the third bracket, but that results in quite a lot of combinations. So what I find easier to do is to just pick two of the brackets first and expand those out and then go from there. So let's expand these two brackets out. And we'll try and do this a bit more quickly than last time. So we've got x times x is x squared. Now let's do both the x terms at the same time. We've got 3 times x, so 3x, and 2x. In total, that's 5x. So it's worth trying to do that in your head. And then 3 times 2 is 6. And now we've got to do each thing in the first bracket times each thing in the second. So we're going to do x times each of these. So that times x is x cubed. That times x is 5x squared that times x is 6x, and then we do the 3 times each of these things. So we got 3 times x squared, 3 times 5x, and 3 times 6, and then let's collect like terms. There's only one x cubed term here, that one here. We've got uh, 5x squared and 3x squared, and then we've got 21x, and then we finally got the plus 18. I find it helpful to actually underline each term as I've used it so I can remember what terms I've used and what terms I haven't. And then we've got C, 4 plus 2 over x squared. So if I just write the bracket out twice, as you usually do if you're squaring something. So we got 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 2 over x. Well, we could think of that as 4 over 1. So 4 over 1 times 2 over x. We times the numerators. 4 times 2 is 8. And the over 1 times the over x, that's just x. The quick way to think about it is when you times a non-fraction by a fraction, the non-fraction only affects the top of the fraction. So that 2 gets times by the 4, but the x wouldn't. So it's 8 over x. And then 4 times 2 over x is again 8 over x. And then 2 over x times 2 over x is 4, because 2 times 2 is 4, and the x times x is x squared. 
And these things are like terms. So 8 over x plus 8 over x is 16 over x, because we have the same denominator, plus 4 over x squared. We've got uh, 5x, 2x plus 1 squared. Now I'm just going to write that bracket out twice, 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. Now, when you've got something on front of like brackets, I would expand out the brackets first and then times it by the 5x. So let's do that. So the 2x plus 1 squared, um, if we do the quick way, it's the first thing squared plus those two things times together, 2x doubled, which is 4x, and then that squared. So we get this. And then we just times each of these things by 5x. So we get 20x cubed. 5x times 4x is 20x squared and 5x times 1 is 5x. Then what about 2? Now these ones are harder because we're subtracting something that we need to expand, and that's where students often make errors. So let's do this first one. Now my advice here is that whenever you're expanding something that you're subtracting, leave it in a bracket first after you've expanded, and then we'll deal, deal with that. So x plus 1 all squared, we're going to put it in a bracket, and then let's just square this. So the quick way is to do that squared, that times that is x times 2 is 2x, and then the second thing squared is 1. And now, because we put this in a bracket, we know that that 1, for example, is going to be subtracted. Because if you didn't have the bracket, you just have 3 minus x squared plus 2x plus 1, those two terms would be positive, when actually, because you've got this minus in front of the whole bracket, they're going to become negated. So that's why it's important to have that bracket. So we've got minus x squared. And then we're minusing 2x. So each thing in this bracket is going to get negated. And then we're minusing plus 1. To get that. Collect like terms. We've got 2 minus x squared minus 2x. What about b? Let's expand this first. We've got 12x plus 8. And then again, because you're expanding something that's being subtracted, we're going to initially put it in a bracket. So let's do the quick way of expanding this. That squared is 4x squared. That times that is minus 2x, double it is minus 4x. And minus 1 squared, negative times negative is positive, so it's plus 1. And then we can deal with this bracket here. So we've got 12x plus 8. And then each of these things is going to be negated. So it's minus 4x squared. We've got minus minus 4x, which is plus 4x. And we've got minus 1. So that is, well, we've got a single x squared term. We've got these x terms here, plus 16x, and 8 minus 1 is 7. And then the final one, 7x squared minus 2 brackets, x minus 3, x minus 4. Well, let's expand out these two brackets first. So we've got x squared. We got minus 3x and minus 4x, which is minus 7x. And we got minus 3 times minus 4, which is plus 12. So we've then got minus 2 times each of these things. So we've got minus 2 times that, so minus 2x squared. Minus 2 times minus 7x is plus 14x. And minus 2 times 12 is minus 24. So that's going to come, uh, well that, minus that is 5x squared plus 14x and minus 24, and we're done.